Welcome to the first day of the Choose Your Own Adventure Star Trek. Sorry, I said that completely wrong. Choose Your Own Star Trek Adventure Readathon, run by Chelsea. And it's the first day, so let's get started and find out what my first prompt is. Welcome to Starfleet. Okay, the day has finally arrived. You have just graduated Starfleet Academy as an ensign for after four years of training. You have always yearned to explore space. Yes, yes, I have. And live amongst the stars. And now that dream is becoming a reality. Soon, you are going to be assigned to a ship. First, can you tell me which division you will be joining? Oh, there's command, science, medical, navigation, communication, operations, and security. I want science. Individuals who join the science branch get to experience and research the flora and fauna of far off worlds. Do you want to join the science branch? Yes. Let's get the prompt. Read a science fiction. Freaking yes! That is exactly kind of what I wanted. One moment. I already know what book I'm reading. And so uh, for my first prompt, I'm going to be ringing, reading a psalm for the wild built by Becky Chambers. And oh, I'm very excited because I was really hoping to get to read this for this readathon. So yay. Hey, hopefully this isn't too nausea inducing. I'm walking back to work after having had lunch and I I'm one of these weird people. I can read while I walk. So I started my book and I love the floor. It says for anybody who could use a break. That just really screams Becky Chambers to I think anybody who knows her. And so I've read the very beginning and yes, I'm so far first two chapters. I am loving the writing of this and I am totally in for this adventure. I will keep you posted. Hey, I am halfway through this book. I would have finished it last night if I hadn't had to work both jobs and I work both jobs again today, but I'm confident that I will get it finished and I am enjoying it so much. Um, I'm past the point where Dex and Moscap meet. Dex is the tea monk and Moscap is the robot. None of this is a spoiler because that is what it says in the synopsis is that they're meeting and I'm just having a really fun time with their conversations as they are both trying to get their heads used to the idea of how the other society works and thinks and acts. I, I honestly can say that as soon as I have extra money to buy a book, I am buying this one because I love it. The writing reminds me actually a lot of This Is How You Lose the Time War. It's just very beautiful and flowing and how they talk with one another it just has that lyricalness of the language. So if you like that book, I am pretty confident you're gonna like this one. I will check with, uh, I will check with you guys later. Hey, today is the third day in the Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon, and I actually finished this last night, The Psalm of the Wild Built, and yes, this is definitely a book that I want to own. Um, it was exactly the fresh breath of air that I needed in my life. So if you don't know what this book is about, Dext, who is a monk, has decided that he they are not happy with the life that they're doing. They're not, they don't feel fulfilled, and this this is kind of um and the story starts off where they're really wanting to hear crickets and crickets don't exist in the city so they decide to become a traveling tea monk which is someone who listens to people's problems and then gives them tea and lets them go just rest while they drink their tea and he goes and he decides to be self-taught so he has hiccups as he learns how to do this and goes off and does it and is fine doing it for a couple of years before that itch of he's missing something because 
where he's traveling, there are no crickets either. So he, he searches the memory banks of their, their online archive and finds recordings from different crickets. And on this moon, the humans have half of the world is where humans can be and the other half is just left to nature. And he finds a recording of a place that is now in the nature area that is supposed to have crickets. And so he decides that he's going to go there and looking at the map doesn't look like it's going to take him very long from where he is. And on his first night as he's ventured into the wild, he meets the robot Mosscap. Many, many years ago, robots gained sentience and decided that they did not want to fulfill the purpose that humans gave them. And humans said, we respect your decision and allowed them to leave. And they went into nature. And that's where they've been ever since. And humans promised that they would not go looking for them. Part of that promise was the robots would come back and check on the humans and make sure they were doing okay and find out what they needed. And so Mosscap keeps asking Dex, what do you need? Oh, I guess I should back up. And so Mosscap comes out of the woods and meets Dex on that first night where they have entered the wild. And Mosscap wants to know, what do you need? And Dex is like, uh, what? <laughs> and so Mosscap wants to go to her, the human villages in the city. And Dex is like, no. I just left there. I'm going to this hermitage. So Mosscap decides to go with them. And it's a series of conversations that just highlights how differently we can see the world. Becky Chambers is always amazing with her themes. And yeah, but really what hit the hardest for me is again, as Dex is searching, he He's fine with his job. It's just not fulfilling him. And that's kind of where I am personally. I like my job, but it doesn't fulfill me. And so I'd like to do something different, but within the same kind of sphere, but I don't know what. And so I very much connected with Dex. And I think everyone should go read this. I haven't run it through Copile yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to have a very high rating. But now that that is done, it is time to do my next prompt. So I finished my book and I've reported to the ship. It's my first day on the starship, being assigned to the best fleet, yeah. Uh, I pull on my blue shirt, I'm excited. My supervisor what comes in. Sorry about the noise in the background. My window is open to help let natural air come in. I live in the Midwest, it's very humid. Um, but yeah, so the lieutenant comes in with the day's tasks and then a page comes through, it's from the bridge. We're currently orbiting a class in planet and the captain is putting together a ground crew for a mission and you're joining it. Who me? Who would you like to Join your away team. Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, Scotty, Uhura, Sulu, or Chekhov. And this is where I don't know Star Trek very well. Um, does it say... doesn't necessarily say why. What is a helmsman? Maybe I should look at that. Someone who steers a ship or a boat. Okay. No. Well, I chose science to begin with, so I think I'm going to choose Dr. McCoy, the chief medical officer. And... He's one of the oldest crew members, so hopefully experienced. Jaded, sarcastic, hot-headed. Yeah, yeah, I'm used to that sort of personality from my husband. Yep, 
Yes, we'll, we'll continue with him. Read a book with bones in the title or on the cover. I know of one that is currently on my shelf, but I gotta look at another one. One moment. which works out because this is also one of my prompts for the Draconathon that is going on. It's a little bit more of a chunker, but since this readathon only has three prompts, I think I can get through this in the next couple days. And then I have the weekend to read one more book. Pretty certain because I have, I have Saturday off, Saturday and Sunday. I can sit down and read a pretty good sized book on that day. So yeah. We're going to go with The Bone Ships by R.J. Barker. All right, so I have read the first nine chapters of this, and I'm really enjoying it. It's very easy to read. It's compelling. And so, I mean, the writing, I'm just enjoying it. The only thing that is difficult for me is there's been a lot of description of the ship. But if you don't know anything about ships, you it is description that you need to know to know how everything is functioning. So it's not bad. It just is a lot because it's in a lot of the first chapters. But I did wake up this morning wanting to pick up this book and continue reading right away. So I'm looking forward to continue reading this over the next couple days. And completing the challenge because I took Dr. Bones with me to on the mission assignment. So it is middle of day on Friday, and I'm not as far in my second book as I hoped I would be. I am loving this book though. However, I'm still only a third just because something happened on Wednesday and I did not have as much time to read as I thought I was going to. And last or yesterday and today I'm working both jobs, which means my progress is a little bit slower. So the hopeful plan is to finish this tomorrow, but to make a good headway, or but to continue making headway in this today. This is about a society that is warring with a fellow island society, and they use sea dragon bones for their ships, and everything is very militarized, even if you get a death sentence, you can end up on a death ship. And the main character, Joran, at the start of this book is captain of a death ship, except he doesn't want it and he's drunk and he's still dealing with his father's death and the circumstances behind that. And then, oh, how do you say her name? My husband always talks about, hey, if they have um, name pronunciations, you should look at it and you should read it. I don't think this one does. Okay, so it does not have a name pronunciation, but so I'm going to call her Mies because I'm otherwise not sure how to say her name. She is fascinating for me, um, but she challenges Joran for his captain's hat and they have a sad little fight and instead of killing him, she makes him her second. And they go back on the ship and the plan is to do something to fight and protect people is is her primary motive at the beginning and there are now rumors of so like the sea dragon that you see here they haven't seen one in many generations and it looks like rumors of one are starting to be seen again these are the bones that they use for their ships and so i'm in I am predicting that there are going to be some battles of people from both of the warring nations trying to kill this serpent. But it looks like that Mia's, her goal is to protect the serpent because she wants the war to end. Barker has done some fascinating world building in this book. I'm like, 
it's very immersive it's for me very original i have not seen this type of thing before um well i like i've seen hints where it's a matriarchal society but the way he's doing it is just it is very different approach for me so i'm very much enjoying that and maybe i'm trying to savor it as i read and that's why i'm reading slower i don't know Joran, i kind of find whiny but he's i feel like we're gonna get some growth arc with him so i'm still holding out and at least he's getting to be part of the action that's unfolding which makes the story interesting i will try to check in later as my day permits <music>
space where the shuttlecraft is readily available. After the officers have gathered around you, you notice a few more people dressed in security and science uniforms. It appears they are going to be rounding out your party. The whole team is here. The mission is simple. The landing party will go down to the surface of the planet since it is a class M planet. It is suitable for humanoid life and no extra suits are needed. Your goal is to observe and collect samples. Simple enough, right? That's what I'm hoping for. Now, we beam down. This is gonna be your first time transporting. You try not to fidget as you make sure your feet are placed squarely in the center of the glowing circle, because it would really suck to have part of your body out and get it left behind. You hear one of the senior crew members speak from behind you. Ready? Energize. You feel a slight tingling sensation as small blinking lights fill your vision. One second you're looking at the transporter room, the next you are standing in a grassy clearing on the planet. Look around. Looking around you are amazed at how much a different planet outside of your solar system can remind you of Earth. To your left is a body of water. It's blue and looks peaceful. To your right are trees. The leaves don't look like any that you've seen before, but they're green. You take in a deep breath. The air smells sweet after breathing in the recycled air from the Enterprise. There's just something about being planet side that you're excited about. Yeah, well, I am a scientist. Time to split up. No. <laughs> okay, enough dawdling. It's time to get to work. Before the science team divides up the jobs, the security team sets up a perimeter, using the spread out around the group from trees to the lake. Some of the science team are going to be using their tricorders to examine and record the floor of the planet. You make sure your tricorder is on and head over toward the trees. You notice the others of the science team have also set their tricorders to search for nearby, for nearby fauna. Another of the science team walks over to the lake. Could the water possibly have native animals in it? Continue. You notice that the trees didn't quite look right when you first beamed down to the planet, but the differences are more, are more noticeable when you're up close. The leaves are green, but the ones on the mm, but the ones on the plant you are currently examining look like a mosaic. It appears that one big leaf is actually made up of smaller segments. Also, the tricorder says that the makeup of them is not one that you've seen before. You take a sample of the leaf for more in-depth study. You also marvel at the fact that the leaf was hot to the touch. Rustle, rustle. The rustle in the bushes behind the trees. Mm. The rustle in the bushes behind the trees, your near is loud. The entire landing party freezes. Could this be intelligent life on the planet? Investigate. Why am I being afraid here? Did I get a death scenario? Which alien do you see? Gorn? Horta, Neri, Neuroparasite, Orion, Salt Vampire, or Triple? I don't know any of these because I don't know Star Trek. I'm going to go with triple. A small, fluffy, cute, and purrs. Read a book that has less than 200 pages. <laughs> Thank you. That makes life a lot easier for me. And once your book is finished, click here. So I'm going to just stop here and then take this with me. Because, yes, I can definitely do that last prompt. Let's see. What am I going to choose, though? this graphic novel on my library shelf for a while so we're going to do monstrous volume three it is 5 49 and sunday the 22nd and i have just Put a hold of my library for the sequel to this and I have finished it. 
and I really enjoyed it. Um, I haven't put it through crop pile yet, so I don't know what I'm reading it. I just know my enjoyment of this was very high. And yeah, I really love the characters. I liked getting to see the emotional growth of Joran. And Barker has layered in some things that have me questioning and wanting to know. Uh, it's like a magical element. And the answer wasn't... And I wasn't given the answer in this book, so that's the next one. However, it was nice that this book did not end on a cliffhanger, per se. You had an actual end to this book. And then the next one you know is a continuation of the journey. But again, it wasn't because there's a cliffhanger. So very, very excited to continue reading this series. And now on to my last prompt for the Choose Your Own Adventure readathon. I hope to be done in an hour or two. It is 10.10 10 and I finished my third prompt, which was volume three of Monstrous. So there's not a lot I can say about this one, but the, it seems like Mike and Zen are developing more of a partnership rather than fighting against one another. And so, we know finish this. Yes, I finished my prompt. You edge slowly closer to the bushes. It sounds like the rustling is coming from near the base of one of the trees. You crouch down and gently move a branch out of the way to see a cluster of fur balls. They vary in color, browns, grays, blacks, whites, even a rusty orange. They also vary in size. The smallest could easily fit in the palm of your hand. Well, the largest reminds you of a fuzzy football. You don't see any other discernible features besides the fur. Curious, you reach down to touch one. You are met with purrs and trills from the group. Aw, they're so cute. You keep petting the creatures because you love how soft they feel, and they just make you happy. You really wish you could take one with you, but you know that taking a native species out of its natural habitat, habitat for your own personal gain is not the best option. You sigh to yourself, give the small creatures one last pet, and stand up. You dust yourself off and resume your duties until it is time to beam up to the ship. Back on the ship, you head off to your quarters. It's been a long day. You were debriefed about the planet, socialized with some of the crew from your department, and now you just want to grab dinner and relax. Your quarters are small, but you don't have a roommate, which is a bonus after suffering through them at the academy. You always liked having a place that was all your own. You go to change out of your uniform when you feel a vibrating coming from your side pocket. Hmm. Confused, you reach in to your pocket and pull out a small palm-sized fuzzball. How did you get in there, you wonder? However, you're too tired to figure that out right now. You go to, you go off to grab a dinner plate to bring back to your quarters and resolve to let the senior staff know tomorrow. The next morning. You wake up the next morning, refreshed and ready to figure out what to do with your little stowaway. They were a comforting presence last night. And you even made sure to give them food off your plate. You don't want them starving after all. You sit up and stretch, opening your eyes to see multiple fuzzballs around your room. It takes you a bit to find them all, but you currently have 12 fuzzballs, and you feel like your problem has gotten 12 times bigger. However, it's only your second day on the Enterprise, and you don't have friends yet. But maybe giving them a cute trailing fuzzball can get that ball rolling. You grab a few of the extra aliens and go off to see some of the crew you were talking to yesterday, Everyone is just enamored with the fuzzballs. You truly couldn't get rid of them fast enough. Everyone loved how soft they were, and the trillions seemed to be have mm, and the trillions seemed to have a calming effect on the person holding it. Proud of yourself, you go off to your shift. Now, mm, these trillos, I forget what they're called. They remind me of the book in the Rolling Stones by Robert Heinlein, The Martian Cats especially with how fast they multiply. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they were. This is reminding me of. Work, work, work. At lunch, you head off to the mess hall to eat and stop dead in your tracks. 
the room has fuzzballs everyone, everywhere. Way more than the ones you got rid of. This could definitely start to be a problem. What should you do? I'm going to try to figure out how to stop them reproducing. And the rolling stones that I just mentioned, they froze them. Dropping their body temperature made them go into hibernation. You head back to your room to grab your original fuzzball. You expect to walk into a horde of them. However, when you open the door, there's just the one. Why aren't there more of you, you question. You're not sure, but you scoop it up and take it to the science lab. This is where you thrive. So you quickly get set up to take a blood sample and x-rays. I wait for the results. After hours of testing, with others stopping by to help you discover that about 50% of their metabolism is geared for reproduction, and they appear to be born pregnant. But they also don't need to eat. If they stop eating, then they don't reproduce. They also are not an intelligent species, and as far as you can tell, they'll live happily as pets. Armed with this information, you inform the senior officers, you help Armed with this information, you inform the senior officers you help, who help you gather up all the fuzzballs. You find out that you have just over a hundred on the ship. So while most are being back down to the planet, you and a couple others elect to keep a tribble, that's what they're called, tribble, as a pet on the ship. Spock is not the happiest about it because they don't seem to serve a purpose. But Uhura, but Uhura is very happy because their purpose is to give you love. Continue. You have reached the end of your journey. Your ending is 5B. Please keep a record of this as you will need it for the Google form. The end. And I just want to say thank you to Chelsea. This has been a wonderful readathon. I've had so much fun with this and I look forward to participating in the next one and also the community on her Discord channel. You all have been wonderful. Thank you.